Hello my kind viewers and welcome to the video demo for my game Tetris Abyss Infinite. Tetris Abyss Infinite is a Tetris fan game that's heavily inspired by roguelite games and mods such as the Link to the Past randomizer. I like to call it a Tetris randomizer and in this video I'd like to kind of show you what I mean by that. The game is available for download now. It's a very early version but if you do download it I recommend you go into the demo expedition here and it's going to have some tutorial stuff and kind of introduce you to the game. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to generate a small random dungeon with uh, normal difficulty. So you can see that after generation we're dropped into this um, dungeon and you can see the map in the top right corner. Uh, we've got a bunch of uh, rooms here and each room well, at least most of them, corresponds to a different Tetris game mode. And so the idea is that you'll complete all these Tetris games and you kind of fight your way out of this dungeon. Um, so I guess we can show off some of the actual Tetris gameplay. Uh, you can see that this room's game mode is called Landslide 2, and on the left you can see details about it. Um, it says that it's going to generate one line of junk every... 0.5 seconds, so it's going to rise up pretty quick, and we have to clear two lines to win. So it's basically a race against these rising blocks to just clear two lines. So hopefully that's not too bad. Let's see if I cannot lose on live camera. Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the basic Tetris gameplay, but what do we do after that, right? For winning that game, we obtained what is called a map rotation, and you can see it below the map in the top right. Uh, we've got two numbers and two icons there. On the left is our map rotations, and on the right is our keys, which we'll talk about a little later. But for the map rotation, what that means is that you can see that we really only have access to these eight rooms here, but you can see that there is a room off to the side here that seems like we should be able to get to somehow. And the way we get to it is we can actually manipulate the blocks on the map itself. So with our map rotation, if I stand in the middle of this L block here and press the rotate button, we can rotate the map as well. And um, another aspect, the, the other number there under the map is the keys. And we just got a key for that last game that we completed. And keys unlock gates, which kind of block your progress so once we unlock that gate we can get over here into this uh, O block. We also see that there's some blocks over here so let's go over here. Um, so there obviously most of the game most of the rooms are Tetris games and you get points for beating them and you lose points if you lose them. There are also in addition to the gates there's one last type of room which is the shop. We can go in and you can buy rotations there. And you can also buy stuff like uh, CDs to change the game music. So if we equip that CD, the CDs uh, feature music from some of my favorite Tetris games. For example, there, this one will be from Tetris Battle Gaiden, which I don't know if anyone even played. I think it was Japanese only. But see, the, the game music is different now that we equipped that. What a jam in tune. Uh, so I saw that this room that we're playing right now also has a key in it, so. Just try to grab that, there we go. Got another key, and here's our another gate. So if we rotate that around, unlock the gate, this is what is actually the end of the level. You can see that uh, this is a light blue block here. And what that means is it's what we call a slide, and it's also denoted by that arrow there. And it's the end of the level, it's four games in a row, no breaks in between, uh, so the risk of loss is much higher because another thing that I forgot to mention, which is kind of important, is you can see in the center our score, and underneath it there's that other number, which is called the wager. And if you lose a game, uh, maybe I can show this off in another room. So if I go ahead and start this inversion game and just lose it, the wager was uh, deducted from my point total. Oh, I just got a text. 
the the wager is uh, deducted from my point total, and um, so that this so this final slide portion with four game modes in a row, that means that I don't have breaks in between to uh, regenerate my score. So the the risk of losing is a little higher here. So we'll go ahead and try it. Again, fingers crossed I don't just lose terribly. Oh, I'm going to lose terribly, aren't I? Uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, made it through that one. So you can see I'm not really going over um, the different game modes that we're going into, but you can see on the left there are details of each game mode. There's quite a few game modes, and the Tetris engine that underlies a lot of this is pretty detailed, if I do say so myself. There's a lot of stuff you can do, and I'll show it off right after we finish this. Because actually as I'm going through this dungeon and running into these different game modes, we're accumulating uh, modifiers, which are um, these little things in the bottom left there that determine how the game is played. Uh, and we're accumulating those to use in the arcade later. So we finished the expedition. Not a bad time. Let's head into the arcade. So this is kind of the th free play mode, and you unlock content by playing through the, uh, the Abyss mode and going through the different expeditions, uh, which are randomly generated, by the way. And then you can come in here and you can access um, all of the different modifiers that you ran into in the Abyss. So for example, if we wanted to set up a game mode where we need to clear 40 lines and we need to do it in, let's say, I don't know, let's be crazy, 50 seconds, uh, we can make that game mode and uh, make it even crazier, let's say, junk generates every one second. So now we've kind of trivially, trivially created our uh, own Tetris game mode, it's kind of cool. You can also do other things in the arcade, such as manipulate different game aspects, such as gravity, auto shift, delayed auto shift, everything like that. You can change the skin. I, it looks like I have everything unlocked here. Um, the skins are also taken from uh, other Tetris games. So here's Tetris CDI, make the game look like that. You can also, the pieces themselves are defined by JSON. So if for example, we wanted to play with the pieces from the uh, classic Tetris on the NES, we can do that. You can see they're appearing in the well slightly differently and the rotation uh, logic is also different as well. And again, that's all determined by JSON. So in theory, you can make about any piece set you would like. Let's go back to SRS though. And you can also change the randomization. Default is the bag randomization, which is pretty standard nowadays, but you can do truly random if you want. And the scoring. Another thing is all of the CDs that you saw in the Abyss mode, you can access the music here and jam out. You can even set up a playlist of uh, multiple tunes. And it's music, again, from some of my favorite Tetris games. You can see Magical Tetris Challenge in there, Tetris Attack, Tetris Battle Guide In, CDI, DX, a bunch of different Tetris games. And the last thing I want to go over is the challenges screen. Uh, there are different challenges like achievements that you can unlock uh, as you play through the game for completing certain types of expeditions and uh, certain things in the arcade. There's not too many of these yet, but this is how you will unlock some extra skins and uh, music that's not available in the arcade mode, or not available in the abyss mode, excuse me. So again, I encourage you to download the demo right below this video, play it through, let me know what you think. Tetris Abyss Infinite is in active development, uh, so let me know if you run any bugs, if you have any suggestions for additional features, and uh, hope you enjoy the game. Thanks for watching.